Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Global Pain Association's weekly program. I'm Ron Aaron Eisenberg and I have the privilege and the honor of serving as your moderator for these programs. We come to you every week or every other week. Uh, we'll keep you posted on the Global Pain Association Facebook page. We were here last week and we'll be here again next week. Today's topic is modern natural medicine for supporting chronic pain. And our special guest is Dr. Trianoi Lodog, Chief Innovation Officer and Co-Founder of Rightful. And we sure look forward to uh, talking with her. She is internationally known for her work with natural supplements and integrative medicine. Uh, so it, it, it's a pleasure in just a moment to welcome her. But first, an even bigger pleasure for me is to welcome Dr. Susan Blackwood, who serves as the executive director of the Global Pain Association, who filled in for me so beautifully last week. And we're delighted, Susan, to have you on. How are you today? Delighted that you're back, Ron. That was a lot of pressure for somebody that doesn't have a broadcast uh, major. Hey, I to you job. But, uh, thank you again for being here. We're glad that you're back. And thank you to the Eisenberg Group for being uh, so wonderful about producing this week after week. It's hard to believe that since May, we now have over 45,000 uh, followers to our events, our virtual series. And every week there's a new topic that either somebody has suggested that we bring up or that we have experts in the field that are willing to participate and share their information with us. Global Pain started in uh, 2017. We had our first series in person in 2018. And when global, I mean, when the panic uh, epidemic hit, Global Pain, I'll spit it out, uh, did a virtual um, pivot. And we started bringing these series uh, by Facebook Live. And it's just been amazing. We can't thank our sponsors enough and especially Rightful Today. We're really excited about them coming on board and being part of our team. And if people want to know more about Global Pain, I'm going to be back on in a little bit, but they can go to our website, globalpain.org. They can get under get involved and they can become a volunteer or a donor. And we're excited about having everybody watch today. Well, Susan, thank you. We'll catch you uh, toward the end of the program as well. And we appreciate all the work you have done in, in making the Global Pain Association seminars possible. Thank you for that. Today's series, by the way, is brought to you by Rightful. I feel, I feel the biggest, biggest thing that's missing in contemporary, contemporary care is, is honoring, honoring the, complexity the complexity of pain, of pain in medicine. In medicine. There, are there are natural, natural remedies, remedies that can help with pain, pain, but it's but confusing for people because, because many practitioners, practitioners don't even know what to recommend. recommend. And, and some, some patients, patients look up what they can and don't find what would actually help them. How do I identify a quality product? When, when we created, created Rightful, Rightful, it was, it was really, really with this vision of being able to create solutions for problems that either are poorly addressed by conventional medicine or where the answers that we have in conventional medicine are fraught with all kinds of problems. So the first thing we wanted to tackle was to create a product that had meaningful amounts of herbs that were crafted specifically to deal with the multifaceted complexity of pain. 75% of people who had recurring pain said that they had a significant improvement. 83% of people felt that they had more energy. And 67% of people said they were sleeping so much better. Now science is merely confirming what people have always known is that nature actually has provided us with one of the richest pharmacies that we'll ever know. Now to welcoming our uh, special guest, Dr. Tiarone Lodog, Innovation Officer and co-founder of Rightful. She is a physician, an author, an educator, a thought leader in integrative medicine. Before earning her medical degree from the University of New Mexico School of Medicine, she practiced herbal medicine and midwifery. She has since become one of the foremost experts in the United States on the safe and appropriate use of botanical remedies and dietary supplements 
and has helped many companies craft safe, innovative, and effective natural products. And Dr. Uh, Tierney, it's nice to see you. Welcome aboard. How are you? Thank you. It's so nice to be here with you. I'm wonderful. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Well, we appreciate all the work too. that you do. Uh, I know you've been advocating, and we saw in that video for natural medicine and alternative therapies for a long time. Uh, how were you first introduced to using herbs as a form of medicine? And, and where are herbal and alternative uh, solutions uh, so effective? Why do they seem uh, to help people? Well, there was a lot there. I would say, um, I, I don't remember not ever um, being exposed to herbs. I think a lot of rural people use more plants. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm in my 60s, so it's, it's sort of that generation. Our grandparents, they all used herbs, right? They all drank chamomile tea or used sage gargles. My, grand, my dad talked about having whorehound cough drops as, as a kid. I mean, so I think it was just a natural part of my um, growing up. So I never thought using herbs was something that most people didn't do for minor problems when they had a cough or a cold or, you know, things like this. I, I later on became really interested in the, in the mechanisms of plants and how they work and the phytochemistry of them. And that led me, you know, uh, from being an herbal medicine practitioner and a, and a massage therapist and a midwife to going to medical school uh, and becoming a physician. I, as an integrative doctor, as an integrative physician, um, I use a sliding scale of evidence. So, you know, for things like, you know, a disease that, that can be really dangerous or cancer or things like this, I'm a cancer survivor. I think you have to have an awful lot of evidence to make a recommendation for that, right? I mean, the more dangerous something is or life-threatening it is, the more acute it can be. Um, you need really high levels of evidence. I think where plants really fit in are for a lot of the things that people are living with um, that, are, that don't fit into that category for where sometimes our treatments actually, the side effects can be, um, can be quite severe. And, you know, we're here today talking about pain. And for me, uh, as somebody who has had chronic pain, uh, I had a hip replacement in 2006 for um, severe hip dysplasia and arthritis. Um, I know what it's like to just try everything, acupuncture and Reiki and plants. And eventually I needed, I needed a hip replacement. So, so when I say natural medicine has a place, I want to be really clear that I use an integrative approach. But I will also say that that journey through pain for me was very illuminating. It was different than being a practitioner taking care of people with pain. I was the patient and it affected my work. It affected my ability to relax and enjoy my family. It affected my sleep. It affected my intimacy with my husband. I mean, there wasn't a part of my life that wasn't impacted by living with this chronic pain. And so even though I did eventually get the hip replacement, I would also say that, um, you know, I still use acupuncture. I still use herbs. I still take lots of things to help keep my left hip um, from needing a replacement, which I'm hoping it won't. Um, so I, I just, I believe that we live in a time now where we can access a full range of options for us, rather that's, um, uh, something like massage therapy or manual medicine, physical therapy, or that's nutrition and dietary supplements and herbal medicine, or rather that's, you know, conventional care and conventional medicine. But it really comes down to the individual and what you're dealing with. And, and if you're living with chronic pain or recurring pain, I would just encourage you to be your own best advocate and just keep knocking on doors until you find the things that work for you. And often it's going to be an integrated approach. It's going to be a blend of multiple things that are going to make you feel better. Well, you know, some uh, providers uh, are right with you on that and are certainly willing uh, to integrate herbs and natural treatments into their uh, practice and others are not. And if you have a PCP <laughs> who is less embracing of, natural products and herbs, what do you recommend the patient does? Well, first of all, I would, I would find an advocate for yourself. Uh, remember, you are in charge of your own health care, right? So you are, you are the captain of your own ship. So um, 
and sometimes what it really requires is um, is educating, you know, uh, educating your providers. So if there's a if you want to take omega three uh, fish oil, for example, because you read it might help with your inflammation, make a healthy inflammation, you should just be open with your your physician or your pharmacist. Your pharmacist can also be a a tremendous asset. I just want to say a lot of people don't use the pharmacist as much as they should. Pharmacists have access to a huge database right in front of them. And if you're on medications, they can also look to see if there's interactions, et cetera. But, you know, I, as a physician, it makes me sad sometimes when, when I hear patients say, well, I didn't tell my other doctor because I didn't want him to be mad at me, or I didn't want him to, you know, think less of me or not give me good care. And, you know, the reality is as a primary care provider myself, my job is to partner with my patient to find what's going to help them. So, you know, be safe, you know, make wise decisions about the things that you're doing, but you're the one living in your body. So, you know, find a practitioner that you can talk to and you can work with. Um, I was a fellowship director at the University of Arizona for many, many, many years. And we trained when I was there, trained more than 700 physicians and nurse practitioners in a thousand hour postdoc fellowship. And you can go to the University of Arizona Center for Integrative Medicine website, and you can actually put in your zip code and where you live, and you can find if there's an integrative doctor near you. And I would, I would strongly encourage you to go to a doctor who's had this advanced training and that might be more willing to partner with you and, and, more, and has more training to be able to, to co-manage these things with you. So those are a few of my thoughts. That's pretty good. Now, uh, in the arsenal of of herbs and other natural supplements. Uh, are there some favorites that you use uh, when it comes to helping folks with chronic pain? What's Dr. Lodog's so, list of um, the, best the favorites? <laughs> of my favorites? My, my, it's like asking what my favorite children are, what, which one's my favorite child. Um, ah. I love, um, I do love turmeric. I loved, I love turmeric. I, I, um, I'm fascinated by the research on it. Um, I cook with it. Uh, turmeric contains, uh, it's, it's a cousin to ginger. So it looks a lot like ginger, right? Except it's got this deep yellow red coloring to it. And that, that deep color actually are a group of compounds called curcuminoids or curcumin is the dominant one. And the research on it is fascinating for it being able to help us um, with chronic pain um, and, and with recurring pain and things like arthritis, we have a number of studies. There was a, a Tufts review from Tufts researchers that actually said, gosh, there's pretty good evidence that turmeric or curcumin is effective um, for knee osteoarthritis. And we should consider it as an adjunctive therapy for people because it's effective and it has fewer side effects. So I think we're, we're seeing a lot of research there with turmeric. I really, I love it. Um, and, and, it's, and it's quite safe for people to use. I love uh, an herb that many people may not have heard about. Um, it's a plant called corydalis. And when I was in China last December, right when the pandemic was starting, I got back right under the wire. Um, but, you know, when, when you're in China, Corydalis is one of their top herbs that they use for pain. Actually, there's even a prescription medication made from a compound from it. Um, much like morphine is taken out of the, the opium poppy plant, they take a compound out of corydalis, and it's in about 10% of all of their pain formulations. And corydalis, um, there was some beautiful and very elegant preclinical research here in the United States that showed that it has a lot of benefit for both the kind of uh, you know, nerve pain that people can experience as well as um, pain from things like arthritis. So, so corydalis is another one that I find to be very useful. A lot of people just don't know about. Now, I should probably mention cannabis. Um, it's controversial, but when we just saw this last election, we also saw more states legalizing it for medical marijuana, um, recreational as well, but many states now allow it for medical use. Uh, including New Mexico, where I live. And I would just say that um, both hemp, hemp, so the non-euphoric cannabis, as well as marijuana, can be helpful uh, for people with pain. And it is something that they may want to talk to their practitioner about. Hemp is available over the counter. And there were two studies that came out recently 
around the topical use of hemp with CBD. So this cannabidiol that's present in the hemp. And one study was done in people with peripheral neuropathy and the other was done in people with temporal mandibular disorders, right? So TMJ, what people call. And in both of those studies, applying this CBD cream topically was shown to improve symptoms, both objectively and subjectively. So I, I think there's just, there's just so many. And, and I would just say that I also am a fan of, of ashwagandha. It's an herb that comes to us from India, the Middle East, and Africa. And ashwagandha is, an, is a plant that over time can help people sleep. It also helps build our resiliency to stress. I will tell you one of the biggest things for me was I would have to get up and go to work. I would be in pain, so I wouldn't sleep at night. I couldn't get comfortable. I bought a new mattress, but my hip always hurt. And we know that even in just two nights of not getting good sleep, not getting restorative sleep, that it increases our pain. It, it, it increases our sensitivity to both deep and superficial pain in just two nights. So, you know, I think sleep is another big one and we don't wanna get you into lots of the sleeping medications unless you really need them. Ashwagandha when taken over time can both help calm you and make you relaxed and also can help promote a restorative sleep. So those are, those are a few of my favorites. I have, I, have a, I have more, but those are a few of my favorites. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, if you are watching us now on the Global Pain Association Facebook page, please share us. When you do that, more and more folks get a chance to be exposed to this program. We've got over 45,000 people who are tuning in every weekend or watching it uh, and downloading it. Uh, but the more you share, the more people get a chance to benefit uh, from expertise like we are hearing from Dr. Tiarana Lodog with Rightful. I'm Ron Aaron Eisenberg. Thank you for being with us on the Global Pain Association's program, trying to bring you information on chronic pain and ways to address it. Uh, so, so tell me, doctor, uh, I, I keep hearing a term uh, in uh, uh, broad communications, entourage, the entourage effect. And, and I'm not quite sure what that means. <laughs> we, we hear it being used in a yeah. variety of ways. What is that? So um, it's used a lot, actually, in cannabis, talking about marijuana. Ethan Russo and some of the other researchers on that plant called it um, this effect where it's not just one compound, right? So in cannabis, it's not just the THC, for instance, the euphoric part of the plant that affects, that, that accounts for all of its activity. It's, it's when you add all those compounds together, one plus one equals three. It's the, 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 uh, the whole is more than just the sum of the parts that they work together and and i find it fascinating as somebody who's been into plants for a very long time um that that all plants work this way you know you you know this it's like everybody said oh eat your carrots it must be the beta carotene in it that makes it do what it does except then we took the beta carotene out of the carrot and we gave it to a bunch of people and we found that it didn't do the things that we thought it was going to do it didn't do the same thing that the carrot did so there are lots and lots of compounds in carrots that make them so healthy for you. And it's the same thing with most plants, or I would say all plants. All plants have a number of compounds that work together that uh, contribute to its overall effects. And so for, for many of the plants that we use, um, that have been used for thousands of years and now are being confirmed by modern science, we know that, that multiple constituents in that plant are acting at different parts of the body. And that's why you can have a plant that can um, help promote a healthy inflammatory response and help ease recurrent pain, but may also help you relax and may help with spasms or sleep. So it, that's what the entourage effect really means is, is that one plus one equals three, that the whole is more than the sum of the parts, especially when it comes to plants. As you now think you're about an expert on the entourage effect. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yeah. It's great uh, cocktail party lingo. If uh, if you want to stump somebody, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, in your own case, you have had such an incredible journey. Uh, how do you go from uh, being a midwife, wifery, uh, to being an MD 
uh, and moving into the natural uh, products field. What was that transition all about? Well, you know, um, I lived in Las Cruces, New Mexico, um, and had a small herb clinic there and a small herb company. And people would come in with so many things that, you know, I didn't know how to treat. I, I didn't know, you know, they'd come in and say, do you have an herb for Hashimoto's disease? And I'd be like, I don't know, you know, I mean, they had complex problems. And it was really my motivation for becoming a physician because I wanted to help people. I wanted to do it responsibly. And I knew that I had to understand that process of disease and physiology much better than I did. Um, I was already into natural medicine. So, you know, a lot of doctors go to medical school and then sort of come to natural medicine, but I sort of went the other way around. And um, I find that it's just the best of all worlds for me. I, I live in Northern New Mexico. So many patients are Hispanic and I worked at Indian Health Service in Albuquerque during my residency. And patients often would seek me out because they were interested in using herbal medicines and, and natural remedies. And they wanted to be able to talk to somebody who would not, not only not judge them for that, but also be willing to come alongside and partner with them. So I, um, I love being an integrative physician and um, I love being able to write a prescription or order a diagnostic test. And I like being able to talk to patients about their diet or being able to talk to them about dietary supplements and be able to do so in a safe and responsible way. So it's been a great journey for me. who have chronic pain, uh, for those who are uh, looking for uh, answers that are not uh, prescriptive drugs, but uh, the kind of natural products that you're talking about. I had a chance to go to your website, uh, rightful.com, and it is just filled with information. I enjoyed the many blogs that you have on there. Uh, why should someone in chronic pain uh, consider Rightful? Well, um, if you're if you're if you're interested in exploring something um, that's a, a natural plant based solution for recurrent pain and all the things that go along with it, some of the stress and the poor sleep, um, Rightful might be a good option for you. Um, it is very high quality. All of our plants are tested for their identity. Then they're tested for more than 300 pesticides, heavy metals, free of microbes. These are natural plants, by the way. So we just want to make sure the quality is superb. Uh, they're delivered in a liquid form. Turmeric uh, likes to be with fat and a little bit of pepper for its absorption. So it's, it's in a liquid form. Uh, so it's going to be absorbed very quickly and be very bioavailable for you. There's a there's a morning blend and an evening blend. And um, the morning kind of helps with your morning energy and the evening helps promote a restorative sleep. So if you're looking, if you're looking for, for a product, this could be a good option for you. We also have a pharmacist available um, if you have questions or if your healthcare provider has questions, um, they can talk to our pharmacist on staff. She's an integrative pharmacist, she's amazing. Um, and, and can help answer questions. So she can also be a good advocate for you. Um, if, you're, if your doctor says, well, that looks interesting, I'm not sure, you could say, well, maybe you could call and talk to the pharmacist or I could arrange a phone call. So uh, Rightful may be a good option, I'm very proud of it. We did a four week open trial on it um, before we launched it to see how people did with it, more than a hundred people. Um, and we're publishing those studies. We're, we're, we're in the process of working with the statistician to finish the methods section. Uh, but it, it was pretty impressive. People had a good response. So our next goal is to actually do a comparative trial comparing it to ibuprofen or acetaminophen in a head-to-head -head trial and see how it does. So yeah, I'd love to see that we're result. a responsible company and uh, we take great pride in the product, yeah. That's cool. Uh, let me ask you, we're about out of time, but uh, Susan Blackwood has a question she wants to throw your way. And I was uh, going to ask you, uh, uh, Dr. Lodog, if there's anything you wanted to add that we haven't covered. But let's start with Susan. Susan, you got a question. Doc, we have been so intrigued by your studies and your practice. And I was hoping you put in a good word with your pharmacist to see if we could have that person on one of our segments because we've been looking for an integrated pharmacist and it sounds like there's one right down the block. 
Yes. There is, and I will definitely pass that along. See if we can make that happen for you. <laughs> you know, and that's what I said. Pharmacists are are quite golden, and they're they're wonderful to work with. So I hope they're part of your integrative team. Whoever's listening, yeah. And yeah, my dad was a pharmacist, so I grew up in a drugstore as a yeah. kid, and uh, most, amazing what he knew about drugs. Yes, one of the most. Yes, but one of the most trusted profession still in the United States is the pharmacist, you know? Um, I would just, in conclusion, I know we're running out of time. I would just say, um, if you're living with a pain condition, um, you just you just keep knocking on those doors and you just keep exploring and trying things. Know that there'll be some days that are better than others, but never ever, ever lose hope or never ever lose that, um, that, that sense of meaning and purpose that you have in your life, because sometimes that can be hard to find when you don't feel well. Um, and just, you know, and, and just don't stop until you get the answers that you're looking for. Um, because, because there's things out there that can help you. So I want to thank well, you for you're the invitation to people. come and be with you today. Um, Susan and, and Ron, thank you. Thank you so much. Bless you for the work you thank do. You. It was great. And, and uh, we're going to put you on the list of those we'd love to invite back uh, at some point. So thanks very much. Appreciate it. Today's program. Thank you. By thank way, you. Today's program is brought to you by Rightful. And I believe we're going to share their video with you right now. I feel that the biggest thing that's missing in contemporary care is honoring the complexity of pain in medicine. There are natural remedies that can help with pain, but it's confusing for people because many practitioners don't even know what to recommend. And some patients look up what they can and don't find what would actually help and how to identify a quality product. When we created Rightful, it was really with this vision of being able to create solutions for problems that either are poorly addressed by conventional medicine or where the answers that we have in conventional medicine are fraught with all kinds of problems. So the first thing we wanted to tackle was to create a product that had meaningful amounts of herbs that were crafted specifically to deal with the multifaceted complexity of pain. 75% of people who had recurring pain said that they had a significant improvement. 83% of people felt that they had more energy. And 67% of people said they were sleeping so much better. Now science is merely confirming what people have always known is that nature actually has provided us with one of the richest pharmacies that we'll ever know. Nature has provided us with one of the richest pharmacies that we will ever know. And you can learn more about Rightful at www.rightful.com. And let's invite Susan Blackwood back for a final word or two on the Global Pain Association and ways in which you can get involved in, and support it. Uh, Susan, she was a great guest. Ron, I knew I was looking forward to this for weeks. And now that I've heard the presentation and seen the video, uh, we're, we're really excited about having Rightful as a partner. And uh, we're appreciative of our advisory council bringing this to our attention. But um, I really want to urge people before the end of the year to help us at Global Pain by making a donation. We want to keep this ser series going. And in all likelihood, it looks like starting at the beginning of the year that we're going to be able to run the series every week on Saturdays. And I know this is a, a huge responsibility and role for the Eisenberg Group, but we really appreciate it. And people can help us by getting on our website, globalpain.org, go under how to get involved, and there's a donation button. It's so easy and pain-free. And, uh, of course, before the end of the year, they'll get a, a tax write-off and a tax receipt from us. So thank you again for hosting this and uh, being the moderator with the most. And uh, we thank again the Rifle folks for making it possible. Well, thank you so much. And uh, 
I'm thrilled to know we're going to go on. Uh, I feel like one of those uh, Hollywood uh, shows that has now been continued. Our option has been picked up and look forward to that. I can give up Saturday morning cartoons, much rather talk about the Global Pain Association, the work we're doing in ways in which we can help literally hundreds of thousands of people across the country. Now, the globalpain.org is where you can go uh, to find more information, to get involved. And the Global Pain Facebook page is where you can go to download shows that have already run, to download this show, and you can share that with friends and neighbors. Well, next week at noon, another virtual pain series will be right here on the Global Pain Association's Facebook page. And I remind you that today's segment, past segments, as I said, you can see on Facebook, uh, on our Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, and on our website at globalpain.org. I'm Ron Aaron Eisenberg. Thank you to our producer and my wife, Gina Galabese Eisenberg, and to Susan Blackwood, who does so much work as head of the Global Pain Association. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.